Hello, I'm Pastor Dennis Phillips from Brandon Assembly of God. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about healing and how to keep it. But I want to start off with a few scriptures, and I believe that this little teaching will be a great blessing to you as it has others and myself. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the spirit that dwells your people. And Lord, I just ask you to give illumination to my mind and direction to my spirit. And thank you, Lord, for this teaching. Thank you for your word. We love you. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to read a, a few scriptures to you first, and I want to talk to you about healing and how to keep it. The first verse of scripture is found in Revelation. It's in chapter 3, verse 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And then it says over here, in James 4, 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And then over in Timothy 6, 12. We read, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. How do you lay hold by faith? How do you hold fast to that which thou hast in the spirit by faith? How do you resist the devil by faith? And I want to give you one more verse of scripture and it's found in Matthew, Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 and 45. The word of God says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, this evil spirit, this demon, I will return into my house from whence I came out. Notice what he said. Then he saith in verse 44, Jesus is speaking. He's talking about when the devil's gone out of a man. Verse 44 says, Then he saith, this demon that's been cast out of a man, I will return into my house. The devil always wants to come back if he's permitted to. From whence I came out, and when he has come, he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, this evil spirit, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. The devil always wants to come back. And sin is an open door to the devil. If you have been delivered from something, whether alcohol, drugs, or whatever it might be, and you are tempted to dabble with it again, that's the devil trying to get back in. So close that door and don't do it. Now, let me get to some more things here. Healing and how to keep it. I laid hands on a lady one time. When I laid hands on this lady. She did not come to the church I passed her. She would visit from another church and so I was praying for the sick and they were lined up in front. And so when I got to her, I said, what'd you come for? She said, the Lord knows. And that's true, the Lord knows. So I just laid hands on her and rebuked the devil and commanded her body to be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and went, went on. Well, three weeks later, this lady calls me and I was out of state in Pensacola, Florida. And so I answered the phone and I said, hello. And she uh, shared with me that ever since hands was laid on her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
she hasn't had the problem she was suffering with. And so I will tell you, because she told me over the phone three weeks later, she wet the bed. She would wet the bed and have to uh, clean her sheets and put new sheets on. And so three weeks went by and she was like, I have not had to change my sheets. And so she called me and she was testifying. I thought, praise the Lord. That sounds like Jesus. Well, she was like that for one month, two months, three months, four months, five months. But around after that fifth month, the devil put a urinary tract infection upon her. And what she was healed of five months previously came back upon her. Now, I don't know if I ever saw that lady again after I laid hands on her. If I did, it was probably one time. So she didn't come enough for me to teach her. Well, let me give you another example. There's a lady that was coming to the same church that I ministered to that lady at. And I was about to leave the service one morning. I've already gave the altar call and asked if the sick needed to be prayed for. And so I dismissed the service with the Lord branded before I left. The Lord branded a lady on my spirit. And I said, hold on everyone. And um, I said, God's dealing with someone right now. Would you come up please? I could have called the lady out, but the Lord didn't tell me to do that. And so if he's branded someone on my spirit, I'm sure he'll speak to them. Now I'm not saying this not a, I'm not saying if the Lord tells you to call someone out, that's error, because it's not. But he branded someone on my spirit. He stopped, he stopped us all from leaving. And I said, the Lord's dealing with a young lady. Would you come up, please? And when I opened my eyes, she was there in front. And I found out later, the Spirit of God poked her on the side and said, he's talking about you. Now, she came up, and I said, what'd you come for? She said, I've been suffering with migraine headaches since I was eight years of age. At the age of 12, medicine quit working. And so she's in her upper 20s at this time. So all those years, you know, 22 would have made 10 years. From the age of 12, medicine quit working. And so she was around 28, 29 at this time. So all those years, she's been suffering with migraine headaches. And she said, I might can tell the shade of color maybe one day during the week, maybe. Well, she came up, I laid hands on her, rebuked the devil, commanded the devil to go that was causing the migraines and commanded her body to be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Yeshua. And that was it. And so she testified two weeks later. Now this hasn't been, never been like this. Two weeks later, she testified in church. She said, I have not had a migraine headache in two weeks. And so we, we praise the Lord, amen. That sounds like Jesus. He's the same today as he was yesterday. Well, now she still comes and hears me preach faithfully. She's been coming for many years, but she was taught how to resist the devil. The previous lady that I laid hands on that wetted the bed, she never came to hear. How important it is to hear. Let me ask you this, what are you hearing? Are you hearing the word of God? Or are you hearing the opinions of men and women? Well, now she's been delivered now for uh, around 10 years. No headaches, no migraines. But a couple months or a few months went by after she was prayed for and she was in her kitchen at her home and she hit her knees because the devil attacked her with a migraine headache. Attacked her. And it was so severe that she hit the kitchen floor on her knees. But she had some good teaching. The word of God says in James 4, 7, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And you remember what Jesus said in Matthew 12, 43 through 45, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return. I will return. After the man gets clean, the devil always wants to come back. Now, let me stop right here and say this. Now, that's not every case. 
but that's some cases. And so, and I will explain a little further here in a moment. So S, uh, this lady had some good, some good teaching. And so when that devil hit her with the migraine headache, and her name was Essie, she fell on her knees in the kitchen and she resist, She says, devil, I resist you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I resist you, devil. I resist these migraines. Go from me in Jesus' name. Now, she got violent with the devil using the name of Jesus. She stood her ground. The devil wanted to come back and make his home by oppressing her. And let me say this because the Lord just brought this to me. There's many Christians today that can have help, but they've been taught wrong saying, well, a Christian can't have a demon. No, a Christian cannot have a demon in their spirit, but a Christian can be oppressed in their body or in their mind by a demon. And so that devil wanted to come back and oppress her with migraine headaches. It's just like you might live in a house and there might be termites in that house. But that doesn't mean there's termites in you. Because see, your body is not you. This body is only the house that we live in. The body's only the house we live in. You are a spirit being. You possess a soul, which is a part of your mind, will, and emotions, and you live in a physical body. And so she dropped to her knees and she began to resist that spirit that was trying to come back. As Jesus said in Matthew 12, 43 and 44 and 45, and then what the Holy Ghost said through the apostle James in chapter four, verse seven, believe God and not man. Believe the Lord and not man. Read the word and rightly divide it. Because there's been a lot of people that could have been helped, but they didn't know to resist the devil because they were taught you can't have a demon. No, not in your spirit you can't because that's where the Holy Ghost is. But a Christian can be oppressed in their body by a demon. And just as I said, you might have a house that has termites in it, but that doesn't mean termites are in you, but they could be in your house. And so your body is not you, it's just the house that you live in. And she resisted the devil for about, she said for about 30 minutes. Now you have to resist him and you have to be violent with him and you have to put up a resistance in your spirit. Now somebody says, what do you mean, Brother Dennis, put up a resistance in your spirit? Well. Just have a resistance on the inside of no. Say I come to your house and I ask you, I say, will you give me charge over your finances for the next 30 days? Well, immediately a resistance came up on the inside of you. That's what I'm talking about. A resistance on the inside. And she resisted the devil and she's been free for many, many years. Healing and how to keep it. That's what we're talking about. Well, let me tell you some more. Uh, hands was laid on a man at the same church that I was telling you about the lady that wetted the bed that it came back on her after five and a half months. Hands was laid up on another man. He had so many back surgeries and he had a scar in his back because he came back the next week showing us his scar. And uh, he come back testifying. Hands was laid on him. The devil was rebuked and uh, commanded his back to be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. And he was healed. And he came back to church the following week testifying that he could play basketball and he could run now. And he was just on cloud number nine, but he didn't come to the church that I pastored. After he came back to testify, to my memory, and I have a good memory, I don't remember see I don't remember ever seeing him walk back into the church again. Now I've seen him outside of church, but into the church again. It's so important. It's so important what church you go to. And well, it came back on him. After a little while, uh, he enjoyed the blessing of God, but he wasn't taught like Essie was to resist the devil. 
and he didn't know to resist the devil. It, the pain hit him, and he accepted all of it back, and he had the same thing he had previously. Now, here's an, here's error, because the Lord just brought this to me. Somebody says, well, if the Lord heals you, you're always healed. Well, that might be the case with some people, because there is a man who was like, he was in his early 80s. I think Ralph was 83 at the time. And I've already gave the altar call for the lost and then for the sick to come up. And I'm at the door as people is leaving, as church is dismissed and people are leaving. Ralph's daughter, Brenda, said, will you pray for daddy? His hip is hurting him. Well, mentally, mentally now I don't control the gift, but the Lord uses me in gifts of healings. and uh, But I don't control that gift. That's his gift, not mine, but he, that's where he uses me at. And so I thought to myself, he's not gonna get anything. Why didn't he come up when I asked the sick to come up? That was my thinking. So I just reached out because I love people. And, uh, and she asked me to pray for her daddy. And so I just reached out in respect to her and said, he'll be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was barely touching him. That elderly gentleman, Ralph, never had any more hip troubles till he went home to be with the Lord around three or four years later. He would always say, you know, I haven't had a pill for that hip. <laughs> well, some people, some people are always sealed and some aren't. So that's what this teaching is for right here. If hands are laid on you, and you are healed instantly, because I got some more things to share with you. Praise God. But be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And it says in the next verse there in Peter, whom the devil resists steadfast in the faith. 1 Peter 5, 9. Now, Essie, knew how to hang on to her healing after she was made whole. The lady that wetted the bed never saw her again. I don't know what she is being taught. After about five and a half months, it came back up on her through a urinary tract infection. The man that hands was laid on him, his back was healed instantly. He come back the next Sunday and testified about how the Lord healed him and play basketball now and run that he couldn't do previously. But I never saw him at church again. And he didn't have no good, he didn't know how to resist the devil. Well, here's someone else. <clears throat> There's a lady, and sometimes I'll have the church, instead of, I, don't, I won't even lay hands on people at times. I'll just say, we'll just make some confessions of faith and resist the devil before we leave maybe on a Sunday night. And so there was a lady that was having some female problems. <clears throat> and so I would lead the congregation in a confession of faith and resisting the devil. And she said, I felt it leave me. I felt it leave my body. Well, and that's been over a year ago, around a year ago now. But she said not too long ago, she said the devil tried to put it, put, put it back on her, what she was healed of, and nobody ever touched her by the laying on of her hands. She just resisted the devil by uh, a confession of faith. And she says, no, you don't, devil. She was violent. No, you don't, devil. I resist you in Jesus' name. And it left her. Now, I don't know how long she resisted. The other lady I told you about that the Lord healed of migraine headaches that she had for many years, she said it was around 30 minutes. And the lady that I'm sharing with you now, she probably resisted around the same or around 15 or 20 minutes, but she stood her ground and the devil left. She said it left her. So we have authority over the devil. Amen. I remember, now them are some firsthand, just some cases that involve me that I just shared with you. And I'm going to share two more with you. I remember hearing about a lady that went to a meeting that was totally death. She was death. 
but she went to a church that didn't believe in divine healing, that didn't believe that God healed today in this day and time. She went to a church that believed that when, that when the apostles died, all that ceased. Well, then God must have changed. Jesus Christ the same yesterday only, huh? No, the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the Bible, Hebrews 13, 8, then Malachi 3, 6 says, I am the Lord God, I change not. That's why we gotta be careful what we hear because faith comes by hearing according to Romans 10, 17 and hearing by the word of God. Unbelief, doubt, fear comes the same way. So here's a lady, her name was Ruby. Ruby was in a church and hands was laid upon her by a minister of God and her ears were open. She could hear, she could hear a pin drop behind her. her. Her hearing was very keen. Well, she went back to the church that she, that she pre, you know, that she belonged to and they talked her out of her healing. They said, Ruby, we're afraid you're going to lose your healing. And she did. The devil took advantage of her lack of faith and what the Lord healed her of came back upon her. Let me give you another man. Man goes to a full gospel church. Hands was laid on him by the pastor there. And his back was instantly healed. I mean, his back was like, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> was stiff. Hands was laid on him. The power of God hit him. And his back was made whole. Well, I, I, I want to say it was three weeks later. Could be wrong, but I want to say about three weeks later or three months later. Well, anyway, later it came back on him and the pastor uh, saw him in his field and he couldn't hardly bend over holding his back. And so the pastor said, what happened? And he says, well, I thought the Lord healed me. And the pastor said, well, how did, did you ever go this long without your back hurting before? And the man that was healed says, no. He said, well, we know the Lord healed you. He, he says, I know what happened to you. And the man says, do you? Well, then tell me. He said, you got a pain in your back. And when you did, you said, I thought the Lord healed me. And when you said that, you opened the door for the devil. And the man said, you must be a fortune teller or mind reader. He says, no, I'm not a fortune teller or mind reader. I know that you had to open the door for the devil to come in. And that man said, you're exactly right. I, I had a pain hit me in my spine. And he grabbed it and he says, well, I thought the Lord healed me. He must not have. And see, so he opened the door to the devil by a lack of knowledge of God's word. And so the pastor there in the field taught him right there how to resist the devil. And he received his healing and he kept his healing. So you see, healing is real and it's for you and it's for me. But there are some people that are healed and that they always keep it. But there are some people that are healed. You might be one of them or you might know someone that was healed and it came back upon them. But they did not know to practice James chapter four, verse seven. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Did you know many times you resist the devil and don't realize it? The Lord just gave me this. When a bad thought, say, say you come over to my house and I'm offering you some coffee or, well, I don't drink coffee. I offer you some tea and, and you see a $20 bill. Barely, you could barely see a $20 bill up under my couch. And I'm going to make you some sweet tea. And the thought comes to your mind to pick that $20 bill up and put it in your pocket. Are you a thief because the thought came? No. You resist that thought. You would probably get it and say, Brother Dennis, here, here's a $20 bill I saw up under your couch. Well, you see, you resisted the devil. The devil wanted you to steal, but you resisted that. You know, a lot of times when people feel angry or they get hurt and they get angry, but inst instead of responding in angry, they responded kind and gentle. We, those people resisted the spirit of anger. They resisted the devil. People resist the devil 
by resisting the thoughts that he brings. So when, when symptoms hit your body, whatever you are healed of, or you might not even have been healed of it. Listen to me carefully what I'm about to tell you. <clears throat> I was on the Mobile Bridge coming back from Pensacola, Florida, where my, my sister used to live there. And she got promoted with the government, so she moved. Man, I sure wish she still lived there. Had a good place to stay for vacation. But anyway, uh, I'm on the Mobile Bridge, and I was wanting to say something sweet to my wife, and I couldn't say it. The devil tried to hit me while I'm driving on the bridge because I had a trailer behind my truck of what my sister was getting rid of. She said that I, that we could have. And and all of a sudden, I just wanted to talk, say something sweet to my wife. And I was going, I'm like, I'm like, and I was like, I can't, I was like thinking to myself, I can't even speak. Um, I'm going to do it. I couldn't speak, but I could speak 1 Peter 2, 24, clearly. And so I started quoting the word of God, who his own self, the Lord Jesus Christ, bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. I could say that and I would resist the devil. I would resist the devil attacking my body trying to give me a stroke while I was driving. And I would quote the word, who his own self bear our sins, my sins in his own body on the tree that we, me, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. That means I was. Thank you, Father, for my healing. And I would say, devil, I resist you. I resist you in Jesus' name. Go for me in the name of Jesus. Well, Tom, my wife and I, and our son, uh, our oldest son together at that time, Tom, we got to Chick-fil-A in Mobile, Alabama. I was speaking as I always have previously. Uh, so if symptoms hit you, if symptoms hit you that you normally don't have, just like if a bad thought was to come to you out of the blue, you would say, I resist, resist that thought. You, re, you resisted the devil. Or say a symptom hit you out of the blue, pain somewhere in your body. And now this is where a lot of people don't know. You need to say, go for me, devil, in Jesus' name. I resist these symptoms. I remember a man, I, I'm going to tell you two, and then I'm going to end because I don't want to be real lengthy here. I got church tonight, so I just want to share two more with you. There was a man that heard me teach along these lines, and he was at home, and his wife was having, he used the word excruciating, and it came upon her suddenly. <clears throat> So he, he laid his hands on his wife and he rebuked it and commanded the devil to go from her in Jesus' name. And he said later, he was testifying that it left immediately. What about if he didn't have the teaching to know that? Well, the devil would have made his home there. Listen to me, this is very serious. I'm here to help you. Resist the devil, the Bible says, and he will flee from you. If you don't resist him, he's not going nowhere. Here's another man at a different church that I was teaching along these lines. He said he was having, I believe, a kidney stone, pain in his kidneys or side, maybe, a, maybe in his side somewhere. I don't know if it was a kidney stone or not, but in his side. And he said, again, he, I think he used the word as well, he said it was excruciating pain. And he remembered the teaching that I was teaching them about how to resist the devil. And he said, devil, go for me in Jesus' name. He said immediately, as you snap your fingers, the pain all stopped. You've been given authority. Jesus, listen, Jesus loves you. I love you. Jesus loves you. God loves you and he wants the best for you. He don't want you in pain. And the Lord just 
wants me to share this with you. You remember what Jesus said in John 10, 10. Jesus said the thief, he's not talking about his father, he's talking about the devil. Jesus said the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus Christ came to give us the abundant life and Jesus Christ loves you. So use what belongs to you. And here's what the Lord ministering to me for a minute. Let me give you one more. The Lord said the first sign that would follow believers is in the 16th chapter of Mark, starting with verse 15, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. It doesn't follow everyone because everyone don't believe. He said the first sign that follows believers is what? They shall cast out devils. I, I told a couple of spirits to leave today in the church and, someone, and, and some people and they left. One more, if the Lord doesn't give me anything else. The Lord wants me to share this with you. We were at church and we were having something for the kids. And her name was Diana. And her daughter came up and says, my mama's not feeling good. And when I came out of the foyer, there she was sitting in her car, the passenger side with the door open with her feet on the concrete with a blacktop. And I looked at her and she looked like she was about to pass out. And so her fiance at that time came running up to the car to see what was wrong with her. And so I just laid hands on her and I says, devil, I rebuke you and command you to go from her in Jesus' name. When I said that and looked up at her, her eyes looked brand new. When I, when I looked at her previous, she looked like she was about to pass out. Well, she got up and enjoyed the rest of the day because Jesus set her free. Jesus wants to use you to set people free. And so... I didn't know she had a disease now. I just rebuked the devil because she looked like she was about to pass out. Well, the following Wednesday, we had Bible study. And she said, ever since you prayed for me the other day here in the parking lot, she said, I get hungry now. She is about three, at that time, three weeks, she would have been, Diana would have been 25. She said, the last time I felt hungry is when I was 15 years of age. And she says, now I get hungry, but I would start shaking and I'd have to get something to eat. But ever since prayer was made for her the other day, when she looked like she was about to pass out, I rebuked the devil and commanded the devil to go. That devil left with his, with his disease. And I would see Diana, oh, months. And I'd say, Diana, you still free? She said, I'm still free. Jesus loves you. God bless you.